The service with a subject approach is my go-to method for managing state in Angular applications. It's relatively simple, it's flexible, and utilizes the power of RxJS and observables. So the only time I wouldn't use it is when I feel the application is complex enough to warrant using something like ngrx, but we'll talk about that a bit more at the end. So this video will require at least a little background knowledge of observables and subjects. So if you aren't already familiar with those concepts, I'll link to some additional resources in the description. Okay, so let's just go through an example. Let's pretend that our application is going to have some articles and we want a service to provide those articles to the components in our app. So to use this approach, we would do something like this. In the article service, we add a behavior subject and make it private. Why is it private? Because we don't want anything outside of this service to be able to emit data on that subject. And why is it a behavior subject? Because unlike just a plain subject, a behavior subject will always have an initial value and it will always return its last value to us when we subscribe to it. So that means whenever we fetch some articles from this service, we're going to get a value. And if we're dealing with a situation where the articles haven't finished loading yet, we're going to get the default initial value, which will just be an empty array. So with this approach, it doesn't matter if we loaded the data five minutes ago, whenever something comes along and subscribes to this behavior subject, it's going to get whatever the last data emitted was. So we intentionally made this private because we don't want things outside of this service to be able to access it, but we do need a way to provide that uh, subject to the rest of the application. So we create a method to fetch it. So we also have to import observable here as well because we are giving this a type of observable and that observable is going to return a stream of articles in an array. Now it's important that we set the return type of this function to observable because that means that other parts of our code base will be able to get the stream of data that behavior subject provides, but they won't be able to call methods like next to emit data on that stream because that isn't included in the observable type. It's only a method available on behavior subjects. So this will allow us to call next from within this service to emit new data on the stream, but nowhere outside of this service will be able to emit new data. Now this isn't a strict requirement. We could have other parts of our application triggering that next method but it helps to keep things cleaner and more organized because we know the only way that new data can go out on this stream is if it's triggered from this file. If we allow it to be triggered from anywhere, then it becomes a lot messier to follow what's going on in our application. So now we need to do something to actually emit some data on this stream. So you can do this however you like, but maybe you have something like an init method in the service that you trigger at some point and in our case, that's going to go and load the articles from somewhere. And once they are loaded, we just call this.articles.next and we supply the data that we want to emit on this stream. Since this is just an HTTP call, it's just going to grab the data once and emit it on the stream. But you might also want to continue emitting new data over time. So you could even have something like a WebSocket that's going to continually call this next method or perhaps you're going to listen for updates from your Firestore database uh, in real time, and it's going to keep calling this over time. And anything that is subscribed to this subject is going to get those data updates in real time as soon as the next method, next method is triggered. And anything in our application that is subscribed to this stream is going to instantly be able to react to any data that is emitted on the stream at any point in time, whether it's called once or 50 times, it doesn't matter. So this is great because it doesn't really matter how you get the data or whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, uh, whether you're using uh, HTTP like I am here or whether it's a WebSocket or whether you're grabbing something from storage, you can do whatever you like. And whenever you have the data you need, you just trigger the next method and then everything in your application can react to that new state. 
And I'm not going to talk about this in this video because it is a bit more complex, but we can also make sure that when we set up our observables that we share a single instance of that observable with the entire application, no matter how many different parts of the app actually call a method like get articles to get that stream. So rather than creating a bunch of new streams every time someone calls it, we can just have one single stream that is shared with the whole application. So for more information on that, I'll link to a separate video I did on hot and cold observables. So now let's consider what happens if we want to provide a way to return only new articles in this service. So what we can do is we can just take our existing stream, pipe on the map operator, which we will need to import from RxJS operators. And then we can use that map operator to modify the stream however we want. In this case, we are filtering the articles array that is output on that stream. And we are just filtering it to only include articles that have the is new property set to true. So now we can just make a call to get new articles, subscribe to that, and we'll just get a stream of new articles. And if you're not super familiar with using RxJS operators, they are super powerful and awesome. Uh, I'll link to some more videos for that as well that you can check out for more information. So that's the basic idea with our service. Now let's see what consuming this in our application actually looks like. So all I'm doing is importing that service or injecting it through the constructor. And then I've just set up this uh, observable public member variable, which I am setting to the value of get articles. Or if I preferred, I could set that to get new articles if I only wanted the new articles. And in this case, I'm actually subscribing to this stream directly and I'm just logging out the articles. But wherever possible, I would recommend not doing that. If we just want to display this data in our template, I could just get rid of this entirely. And then in our template, wherever we want to display it, uh, this is probably going to be a list, for example. Maybe we have some ion items. And we can just say ng4 equals let article of articles. And then we just use the async pipe. And what this will do is it will automatically subscribe to the article stream for us and allow us to pull out that data. And it will also handle automatically unsubscribing from the stream as well. Whereas if we manually subscribe to that subscription in our code here, we need to make sure that we unsubscribe from that at some point. For example, when the component is destroyed. Otherwise we could create memory leaks and other bad situations. And there is also some more advanced stuff you can do with the async pipe. So again, I'll link to another video I published recently that you can check out if you're interested in using that as well. So there is so much you can do with RxJS streams. So the possibilities with this approach are quite limitless. But I mentioned earlier that I would use this approach except for when the app is complex enough to warrant using something like NGRX. So NGRX manages state with observable streams as well but it uses the Redux pattern. Now, I'm not going to get into what that is in this video, but the downside of the approach we have been using is that there aren't really any strict or structured rules here. You can just do whatever you want. So this puts the responsibility on you to make important design decisions that are going to scale well. As the application state becomes more complex, you have to make careful decisions as to how you want to manage things. Otherwise your application could still become a complicated mess. The benefit of something like NGRX is that although it is more complex, it is very structured and has strong opinions about how to manage state. So you don't need to make these difficult design decisions yourself. It also generally works well for a team environment because everyone can more easily understand the rules as opposed to following the whimsical ideas of one developer or everyone just kind of doing their own thing with the state. It won't take too long before things just get out of hand. So if you'd like to see some videos about NGRX, uh, let me know in the comments and I will see what I can do. Okay, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.